You're listening to The Dating Den with dating and relationship badass and best-selling author Marnie Batista. Every week, you'll get the raw truth from top experts and real people on the important dating, sex, and relationship issues you want to know about. So if you're ready for true talk that's authentic and unfiltered, and you're not afraid to be called out on your <clears throat> stuff, then you're ready for what's next. All right, ladies, welcome back into my dating den. Um, I was just eating lunch with my daughter, and I literally was like, this is an interview I've been looking forward to for weeks because it is about, drumroll please, online dating. Um, ladies, you hate it, you love it, you hate it, you hate it, you kind of love it, but mostly you hate it. So I thought I would bring in Mike Goldstein, who is... Um, a successful private dating coach. He's a public speaker. He's an author, and he has been on the Today Show. He's been in Reader's Digest, Star Ledger, Shape Magazine, uh, NewJersey.com. He probably has a really cute accent, too, if we're lucky. I think New Jersey accents, by the way, are super hot. Um, And he's come into the dating den to tell us how to get this, be the top 5% of successful online daters. Wow. And... Michael, does your mom call you Michael? She does. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Michael, um, you were telling me that if people do your thing, they could possibly meet their guy after just, you know, six to eight dates or 68 guys. Not 68 ladies, six to eight. Is this true? Yeah, that is true. And so nice to be here, Marnie. Thanks for having me. Oh, my God. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Um, So I just want to get right to it, you know, because I just think that there's a lot of questions about online dating. Um, So first of all, this is just everyone's top question I get. Is there a way to determine if one online dating site is better to use and how and why? And is it based on where you live or what you like or how old you are, or how fat you are. I mean, what, what do we do? Well, if you are looking for something specific, um, then there typically is a very specific site for you. Um, but if we're going general, absolutely there is one site that can be hands and, hands and feet above the rest of them, 100%. Are you going to tell us what it is? I am. Um, I love... <laughs> Okay, Cupid. Um, when you're doing it um, the way I'll teach, that's great. Why? Why? Okay, Cupid. I like Okay, Cupid, but I was wondering if it's like you know, like maybe in LA it's good, or in Boulder it's good. But is it like just generally speaking a really great site? Um, so with my clients, I've done Okay, Cupid all across the country. I've done it in London, Australia. It can be successful pretty much all over the world. Um, Reason being, the guys who created it are uh, from Harvard, and they created a magnificent algorithm that actually works. Um, When you look at, um, there's match percentage. So whenever you're looking at, um, let's say you're a woman looking at a guy, and it says he's a 93% match. Well, my data has found that anytime you go on a date that's 90% or higher, 85% of the time you have a good conversation. So that's why, kind of to what you were saying earlier, I found that you only really need to meet six to eight men if you use this algorithm and the rest of my system. Wow. Okay, so this is so cool. So first of all, what Mr. Michael Goldstein is telling us, ladies, is that you can be a little picky, right? I mean, if you're looking like I'm only going to go out with guys who I'm a 90% match or over, you're kind of giving yourself permission to not feel like, oh, maybe I'm not being open-minded. Is this true? Yeah, great, great point. Yeah, absolutely be picky. Um, the algorithm definitely works, but um, obviously I trust, you know, our audience members um, the best. So if they read a profile and they're like, wow, this guy looks fantastic. I got to meet him. Then, yeah, go on a date with him. But if you're also reading it and he is above 90 percent, but you're like, oh, my God, this profile is terrible. We have nothing in common. No way. Then, yeah, absolutely be picky and, and don't go on that date. OK, OK. So we're talking about OK Cupid. How? Oh, my God. Pre- <laughs> I'm just like cringing and smiling profile (laughs) pictures only because like I had a client who um, I was working with and she's amazing. And she's just like, Oh my gosh, she's like the sweetest thing. She's a doctor. She's just like the bomb diddy bomb.com. And so we were doing some private coaching and she was like, I don't really get it. I'm like, I'm not just meeting the kind of quality guys that I want. 
And so I looked at her per, uh, her profile pictures, Mike, and my opinion, and I never say I'm an online dating expert, which is why you're here. My opinion was they were not showcasing how amazing she is. So I would love for you to tell me, like, how do you select those profile pictures and natural or headshot? Like, what's your what's your system? <clears throat> Absolutely. So I have six points uh, for the perfect profile picture that I'll go over. Okay. Um, but first off, let me qualify all this uh, information I'm about to give you. So everything I'm about to speak about is not my opinion whatsoever. It's all fact-based. Um, I work with a number of major online dating sites and they send me their data. And so everything I give you is just based on millions of, of data points and analytics. Um, so this is just absolute perfection. Um, you will get more messages than everyone else if you do this. This is awesome. But wait, I want to also, I know it's fact, but also your, it's your skill. I mean, you are really, you have like a huge success rate. What is, I remember reading it in your bio. What, do you have like a massive success rate? Like 83% ladies, 83% of people who follow this and work with Michael, I'm just calling you that, um, <laughs> get relationships. So this is, yes, it's, it's fact, but there's also like, you are bringing your mojo and your expertise and it works. So I just wanted to like, I wanted to wrap it in the fact that this is not bullshit. Okay. So go teach us the six points about the ideal profile picture. I'm taking notes. Marnie, can I get you on payroll? Man, you like <laughs> look good. This is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Well, um, you, you so got to do it. Points. <laughs> what you got to do it right i mean literally that's what i'm saying like i look at my client and she's like confident she's done all the internal work and i'm looking at her pictures and i'm like honey you know like no but that's my opinion right now so i'm going to make sure that i am teaching the right stuff right like i want to make sure i'm following the six points according to the laws of michael so go all right going all right so first you asked do we want professional pictures and this is not part of the six points but um, sure. Absolutely. You can do professional pictures. Uh, my only thing is, um, if this, it allows you to have 10 pictures, um, maybe do eight professional two non, Okay. just so we know that you're a real person. Um, because if it, they're all professional, um, people may think it's a scam or a robot or whatever. Okay. So let's fix that. All right. Six points. Number one, um, vitally important. No one in the picture with you. Um, this is so important. Um, I coach mostly women. And so if there's a man in the picture, I don't care if it's your brother, your cousin, men will assume it's your boyfriend or some guy that you've dated and they will get immediately jealous. Um, so no one um, in the picture with you. And even um, you can't be in a picture with all your girlfriends because once again, we're not going to know which one's you. Um, and if one of them is more attractive than you, it doesn't make you look as good. <laughs> anyway, <yourself. laughs> no, I love that. So I did tell this client that because she had a couple of girlfriend pictures. And I was like, I was thinking even when I'm looking for men, when I was single, I would be like, I'd have to like zoom in. It's just, it's like online marketing, right? Like less clicks, the better, right? So you don't want someone to have to work to figure out which one is you. So, and I love the point about if she's hotter then that's just, well, obvious. Okay. Carry on. Point number two. Yeah, absolutely. If for some reason you must have someone in the picture with you, um, not to be mean, but make sure she is terribly bad looking so that it makes <laughs> you look better. We tell it real and raw in the dating den, ladies. So you know what? We, you, we don't care if you don't like us. We just want you to meet the love of your life. That's right. We're all about getting you to fall in love. All right. So second thing. And this may sound weird, but it just, you get more messages. Make the picture as close to square as possible. Um, so make sure you're centered, the picture is square, and you get more messages. I don't know why, but that's what the data tells us. Love it. Um, number, this is huge. And there's been an advancement on this. So don't be too far, too close to the camera. And so to get really specific with everyone, if you can make just your face, um, not including your hair, your face, eight to 15% of the surface area of the entire picture. So I'll say that again, eight to 15% of the entire surface area of the picture is your face. That's the distance from the camera. You will get way more messages than everyone else. Um, really important. So most of your fo photos should be around that. Okay, I gotta ask. So my little brain is going, um, 
Is there like some sizing at like how the hell do I know? I'm thinking like when I got like a visa to go to Africa, there was this app and you put your picture in it and you cropped it so that your face fit in this certain little oval. Like honestly, like that's what I'm thinking. Is there something like this that exists or how do you know? So you kind of just want to ballpark it. Um, because there's not if you're close to the eight to fifteen percent, you still get a lot of messages. But then when you go really far away from that, like if you go to twenty five percent or thirty percent, that's when you really start uh, losing the amount of messages you get. So you just want to ballpark it. So you're thinking, all right, I want to be pretty far from the camera because most people, um their faces are substantially bigger, and they're um, underperforming the people that are further away. Interesting. Okay, we don't know why it works, but it works. Okay, what else? Um, yes. Um, so the fourth thing is varied situations, um, kind of obvious. So you're, you know, on the beach, you're skiing, you're traveling, you're doing whatever you love. You're playing soccer. So showing, telling a story. Um, number five is use as many photos as possible. So, um, for example, okay, Cupid allows you to have 10. So try to use 10. Um, the only thing with that is, let's say you're at six or seven or eight or whatever you're at, and you've got one more that's eh, maybe you don't look so fabulous in it. Um, you're going to be better off not adding that extra one. So if you have 10 good ones, absolutely. But if you're trying to stretch it with a mediocre picture, just, just leave it alone and obviously do the best you can in general. Can I ask Number you a, wait, can I ask you a question about the tell a story and the activity photos? Cuz this yeah. is so my client that um I'm thinking of and actually a bunch of them. They put so many photos of them doing activities that you can't actually see them. It's like this is me zip lining. Okay, wait, I'm wearing a helmet and I'm uh, like so far away that I look like a floating dot and here's me mountain biking. Oh wait, I was wearing glasses and a helmet in that one. And here's me skiing last year in Utah and I'm wearing goggles and a helmet and a big giant fluffy coat. So what, what do you do? What do you say about like floppy hat and sunglasses, goggles, masks? You know, you're so adventury. You're on your bike, hiding down the mountain, but you're like a dot. Like how many, like, is there a ratio? Are these good? Are these bad? What's your opinion on that? Or what's the facts on that? Wow. You're good at this. That was actually 0.6. You like oh, brought me right into okay, it. Okay, great. Um, so the, the actual stat of that is 80% of your photos should be where you look stunning. So if there's 10 photos, eight of them, eight of them are like, oh my God, this woman is so gorgeous. And so that's the story. And then you tell a story. And then the 20% you're doing the activity. Okay. And so in the 20%, yes, you can get away where maybe you're like a little dot, like climbing a mountain and we can't really see you, but we saw you in the other eight pictures. So the story we try to tell with photos is 80% is like, oh my God, this woman is unbelievably gorgeous. I need to meet her. And then the 20% is like, not only is this woman beautiful, but if we had a life together, look at all these fun activities we do. Look what our life could be together. This is amazing. I need to message her because she is gorgeous and we could have an amazing life together. Okay. Let me out. I, I'm very picky about this because I, you know, I have real clients that, that send me their profiles. Okay. So another client who her activity pictures were not of her, but they were of um, a meal that she prepared, like a dish. And then the other one was a picture of a garden. And I told her, and I could have been wrong, I was like, you know, that's nice, but I think we want to see you. And she said to me, I get a lot of, like, conversation starter emails about the garden and the meal. And so I'm curious, like, when you're telling the story in that other 20%, do you always need to be in the photo, or are those great options? Um, great question. Um, so, yes, you should be in the photo. It, it's vitally important. Um, the reason that uh, particular client may have been getting messages about that is those were the easiest things for the men to message about. So a common problem for men is like, oh, my God, this girl's gorgeous, but I have no idea what to message her because her profile is saying like, oh, I'm nice, I'm funny, I like to watch Netflix, and sometimes I go out. Like there's nothing to grab onto. <laughs> right. So if a profile is written the way I'll teach to write it, there's going to be at least 10 opportunities for a man to have something to message about. And you need to give them some meat and potatoes so that they have something to message. Um, and quite frankly, like 95% of profiles are not written specific enough to really give a lot of options for men to write about. Yeah. Okay, great. This is really good. And her photos, and I told her this, you know, they were like um, 
the the dating don'ts like they were they were so like she'd blown them up so much that they were blurry and like one had like really bad light and one she'd like tried to crop out like somebody's shoulder and so like half the shoulder was in it so i'm just <laughs> saying i think these are obvious but i think people don't really understand how vitally important it is so when you talk about that 80 percent you want to look gorgeous but also like it needs to be like not blurry and like r- appropriate lighting and there there can't be somebody's like arm kind of like near your ear. Yeah, those are all really good points. <laughs> <laughs> no arm like I learned I learned from Michael and Marnie no arm by the ear. Can we hashtag that? <laughs> hashtag no arm by ear. Okay, so I probably got you way off track, but are we on six or seven? Uh we are done. I finished my six. Okay, great. So yeah. So honestly, ladies, like this is your homework. And here's the thing. <laughs> M- Michael, back me up on this. Um, be like honest with yourself. Because honestly, I have had so many women and they're like, no, these are great pictures. And I totally, I've, list- I've taken the class. I read the book. They're amazing. And then I go online and I'm like, you have a picture of your garden and a chocolate souffle. So <laughs> make sure. And if she's listening, you know that I love you so much, by the way. Um, you know, like you really want to, to have an have a um honest heart to heart with yourself when you're evaluating your profile, right, Michael? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Cool. Um. And, yeah. Go ahead. And it's okay. Like if if you're a woman, go get a male opinion. Be like, hey, do I look hot in these pictures? And see what he says. And you can get some honest feedback from one of your male friends, and then you can tweak from there. Okay, awesome. And then I know I've heard before, like that, you know, in those 80% that are, wow, you look amazing. There, there should be one body shot. Yes. No. Or is that an urban legend? Um, Great question. So when we go back to point three, don't be too far, too close to the camera. You're going to be able to see um, the body um, from theoretically from almost all the photos, because it'll be far enough from the camera where you're seeing the whole, the whole shape and the whole figure. Okay. You're really good at this. Okay, great. All right. So let's move to the uh, question. Wait, can I tell a funny story as an interlude? Because I want your opinion on this. Please. Okay, before we go. So coming next, what should you write in your profile? But this is a real life thing that happened. Um, So I want your opinion. So I have a client. English is her second language. But if you speak to her, you would know that she has an accent. But there's no weird colloquialism. Like she... is communication is not an issue. You know, she she speaks English, but she it's her second language. She's got an accent. So anyway, funny story. She's uh, messaging with a guy she met online, and he's telling a story about golfing. And he says, "Yeah, you know, though when you get on the golf course, the f bombs are just like you know out of control." So my client doesn't know what an f bomb is because that's not a word that she knows in English. And so she messages him something, and then she goes like, and yes, lots of bombs to you too. (laughs) 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 Anyway, so, and he never wrote back. So we're going through her, her inbox, and she's like, I don't understand. You know, this guy disappeared, and we're having a nice conversation and whatever. And so I went and I did my little detective work, and I was like, F bombs. I'm like, oh my God, you said bombs back to you. And so he, it was a miscommunication. Bottom line is she um she used that as a reason to re-engage with him. Like, oh my and her account got hacked. It was a whole thing. But she was like, I was reading back over our messages and I totally just realized my friend told me that what an F bomb is and English is my second language. And it's kind of actually funny that I basically said, you know, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> So he wrote back and he's like, that's really funny. I'm glad to know that. Anyway, they re-engaged in a conversation. But when you're, uh, when we're, when we talk about like, what should you write in your profile? And then what do you write to, you know, to, um, to people that you're talking about? Like that, like, how do you, is there a way we're kind of skipping around, but is there a way to be like, how do you know you're being flirty enough or like interesting enough when you're engaging in those first emails so that you don't sound like you're doing a job interview? Like, Oh, I see you like bowling and you love to travel. Where do you travel and where do you bowl? I mean, how do you, how do you get the, the girl action going on that? Oh, great question. So like, I'm a huge fan of getting to the date as soon as possible. Okay. Um, I think Men are all about speed. They want to get to the date. And then women are about comfort comfort, and, of course, speed as well. But they want to feel comfortable before they can get on the date. 
So for a lot of women, um, they do feel comfortable to go quite quickly to get to a date um, and obviously meet in a public place. But I don't think you really, there should be much flirting because it, it's kind of tough and it's not really necessary. I'd rather just have someone say, hey, uh, you know, would you like to grab a drink sometime and just get the ball moving? So you feel like it's because I really I don't I'm curious about this. So you feel like if a woman's had a few interactions because my clients feel like men are so slow to like actually pull the trigger and be like, great, let's meet. They're like, we should see each other soon. I look forward to meeting you. I can't wait to hear that story when we meet. But then they never ask someone out. So what do you what do you suggest in that situation that's kind of feminine? So it's not like you're doing the asking out or the pursuing. But what, what do you do? What do you suggest? So great question. Um, so I actually get rid of the gender roles in terms of online dating. And I want women to ask the guy out. And I know a lot of people think I'm crazy, but it, it absolutely works. So the last seven relationships I got my clients into, six of them um, sent the first message saying like, hey, would you like to grab a drink sometime? That was and just so it. That was the first message. That was the first message based Damn. on the algorithm and going after guys that made sense. But um What's interesting about this is, so if you get them on the date, so men are looking for speed and men don't get that many messages. So if we look at your typical woman, she's getting five to 10 messages a day. A man might get one, maybe two a week. And that's like high. A lot of them are getting one to two a month. So when a man finally gets a message, it doesn't matter what it says. It can say anything. It could say like blah, 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 blah. And he's going to research it because he doesn't get that much. So he's going to really look at your profile, really look at your pictures and see if it's a fit. Um, so if a woman asks a guy out and they get on the date, now I want her to go back to her feminine side, go have fun on the date. Let's say it's a phenomenal date. You know, at the end of it, she can say, wow, I had so much fun. I hope I get to see you again. Then I want her to be radio silent, no texting, no phone calls. And let's see if the guy asks, uh, asks her out on second date. And, you know, then you go back to your feminine, your feminine side. Awesome. Um, does that make sense? Totally, totally. So, okay, so if you're not so as bold bold as to just message first things like, hey, you know, let's get a drink, you, you want to, and I've said this too, like, it's like you're in a crowded room. I mean, you have to like, you have to, it's like eye contact is just sending that first message. I mean, you have to do it. You can't just wait around for guys to message you. So you want to, it's okay to initiate. And if you want to try Michael's way, um, which sounds like it's working is, you know, just say, let's go have a drink. So interesting. I love this. Okay. So let's go back. That was a, uh, commercial. No, that was a, like a bonus section. Let's go back to <laughs> writing the profile. Um, what should you write in your profile? I know so many women just struggle. And when I read over them, you know, when they're poorly written for me, it looks like, let me do a commercial for everything I don't want because I'm reacting to my last bad relationship in this profile. Like, no, you know, <laughs> no drama. If you're looking for someone to be your mother, that's not me. Um, you know, like, um, I'm really busy and I love my career and, you know, I'm, I'm interested in having, you know, someone who can move as fast as me and enjoy life. I mean, I just feel like some of them are so masculine and, um, really like commercials for what didn't work in the last relationship. So given that, like, what do you do to avoid those common mistakes? Wow. Yeah, that was spot on. Those are, those are pretty bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen them. I'm sure you have too. Oh yeah. Um, so the, like, if there's nothing that people get from this podcast, this is like the most important point that I can possibly give. And it's to tell stories and be specific in your profile is so, so important. Um, and I hate adjectives, kind of like what you just said. Like, don't say, like, I'm nice, I'm energetic. I don't know what that means. Like, if I describe myself as nice, um, that could mean, you know, when I walk down the street of the streets of Manhattan um, and I see a friend, I talk and talk to them for five minutes. Or it could mean I see a homeless person, I pick them up, I take them to Olive Garden, um, I buy them, uh, you know, the chicken Alfredo. Um, I talk to them about, you know, how we can get them a job. Um, I take them to a homeless shelter and I stop my whole day. Those are two different versions of how a person can be nice. So I'd much rather hear like a story than get an adjective because adjectives can mean anything. 
Does that make sense? Totally, totally. Okay, so do you want to play a game? I actually have a profile that someone sent me that said they would like my input, but it's not my area of expertise. So can I read you this and you can tell me, give, can we give this client some feedback? Oh my God, this sounds so much fun. Let's right? do it. Okay, let's do it. Oh my God, you're going to be so happy, client. Client, you know who you are and I love you too. Okay, so she said, um, I'm a fun, down-to-earth and passionate woman who loves her life and wants to share it with a special person like you. My relationship vision is to experience an amazing, loving connection with a successful, big-hearted, compassionate, adventurous man with a great sense of humor. Together, through our amazing relationship, we can create endless magic moments. Then she wrote, my snapshot of our upcoming weekend. On Friday night, we set the mood with a romantic candlelit dinner, a bottle of our favorite wine, your latest musical obsession playing in the background as we catch up, converse, and laugh. We watch a movie post-dinner intertwined on the sofa because we have an intense attraction to each other. On Friday night, we go out to the beach for a stroll and watch the gorgeous sunset as we feel the heat simply holding our hands while the ocean breeze cools our skin. Wow, she's a good writer. Saturdays, our mornings are active as we choose between hiking, cycling, or the gym. For lunch, perhaps we're invited to our friend's home where we thoroughly enjoy our time reveling in their company and trading hilarious stories. Sundays are our day to relax with no agenda whatsoever so we can flow in our love and take pleasure in whatever the day brings. We love to travel, and our getaways vary between adventurous trips like hiking, camping, backpacking, whitewater rafting, or skiing, to relaxing at a fabulous beach resort, to a long weekend at a luxurious hotel exploring a beautiful city. Are you ready? Let's make it happen. What do you think? Wow. That was something, all right. Right? Um, <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm married and not a lesbian, and I want to go out with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely no, yeah really I mean, what do you I, think um you know i thought that was a great outline like i would love to like copy and paste that put it in microsoft word and then come up with some so it had a lot of generalities okay and i'd love to get more specific like you know i can't remember the whole thing but like part of it she was like um let's go to a luxurious hotel well kind of like how i said nice i don't know what luxurious means like is luxurious like a best western or is that like um you know, the Ritz Carlton, I don't know what luxury means to you. Mm. And that's how I felt about kind of the whole thing. Like I need more of like really specific, like, all right, so we're going to, I want to understand what our life could really be like together. So on Friday night, are we, you know, are we going to have a candlelit dinner at 8 PM? And then um, what movie are we going to watch? Like, what kind of movies do you like? Do you like, do you you want to watch, are we watching law and order? Like I need really specific, like, you know, my Friday is three hours of law and order. I go to bed at 11. I wake up at seven. I go on a three mile run in Central Park. Like I want people to understand what a life could be like with our clients. So uh, OK, keep it at the bottom. Ask like, what is your typical Friday night? And that's kind of the specificity I'm looking for. And I think that's what your client needs is really outlining. Like she she gave an outline of a great date, but I want to hear like the details because when you get in the details, you can kind of really figure out who a person is and what they're all about. I love I, this feedback. So let me tell you why. Um, I think women and maybe men, I don't know. I don't read their profiles so much anymore. But they're afraid of, like, missing out on someone, right? So they're not going to say the Ritz because they're in their brain they're like, well, what if he doesn't like the Ritz? Or what if he had a bad experience with the Ritz? Or what if the Ritz is too expensive for him? Or what if the Ritz is not nice enough for him? And so what you're saying is, look. Be who you are, really talk about it, and you may go on less dates or you might meet less men, but the men that you match with when you have the right picture and the right profile are more likely to be your true, like, soulmate. That's what I hear you saying. Yeah, that was perfect. That was perfect. Wow. Wow. That's really nice. Thanks. Um, Okay. So be specific. Any other strategies about uh, writing the profile that you can recommend? Uh, Should they, how long should they be? Um, Do men read long profiles? Yeah. So um, if I guess two points, Um, one in terms of length, um, if so, okay, Cupid has like 10 questions. So maybe depending on the question, like the summary could be three to five sentences And then maybe some of the other questions, you only need like one sentence, but typically everything should, um, you know, be three to five sentences or so, or the section that says like, what's your favorite movies, just list and be specific of like movies, TV show, food and food. Don't be generic. Don't say like Italian. I want to hear like, I love, um, 
chicken parmesan with fettuccine alfredo with uh, a side of fra daviolo sauce to sprinkle on the chicken. Like I really want the details. Um, so that's kind of the length. And the second point is you, um, you, I want, I think every profile should give a man an opportunity to message kind of risk-free. And what I mean by that is, um, so let's say you say, oh, I'm going to be traveling to Greece, um, in June. If anyone's been, um, if you've been, uh, message me with your recommendations and I promise I will respond. And I love this because men read these profiles and they have no idea what they should message you. And it takes them a lot of time to try and figure it out. But instead, just, you know, throw them a lifeline. Say, here you go. Here's Greece. And even if the guy hasn't been, if he's just infatuated with you, let him go to Google and Google Greece and figure out some cool things for you to do. And he can send it to you. And even though you you said, I promise I will respond. So he's like, cool. There's no fear of rejection. And of course, everyone's afraid of rejection. He knows he can message you. You're going to respond. And of course, as a woman, you don't need to respond. But at least we made him not afraid to send you a message. And boom, you gave him an easy, um, risk-free way to send you a message. Wow. Okay. So I... How I'm curious. I would never say I promise if I, because I, you know, I'm dating with dignity. So I would never say I promise if I don't intend to do it. So, what, like, is there a, if someone is that's important to them, do you have to say I promise to respond or say, like, um, you know, I'll thank you, you know, and I promise I'll thank you for your recommendation. So they could just say, oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Is, even if they're not interested or is there, is, there no way around it. What's your, what do you think about that? Marty, I love that. And thank you for bringing that up. I mean, there's definitely um, a lot of people that wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. And so then you just got to kind of entirely nix the whole thing. And the reason I'm comfortable with it is I'm all about finding love extremely efficiently. Like that's my whole thing. And if we can get more messages coming in and we didn't really review my process of messages going out, it's all about getting to people, getting love faster for everyone. And that's why I do this. So men don't even have to waste time thinking of a really crafty message to write to you. So that same guy that was probably going to message you was going to send you something different than he really had to think about. So you saved him time. All right, you don't get a response. I mean, we all get it. In online dating, unfortunately, there's just so much traffic coming in for women, and they're not responding to, I'd say, probably 90% of their messages anyway. So for me, it's it's not the end of the world because everyone's kind of used to it, which, you know, unfortunately, that's the norm. But the end game is finding love efficiently. So that's why I think this is making life easier for men. And for the most part, it's a good thing. Okay. I would, if it was me, I would have to just be like, thanks. <laughs> that's just who I am. I'd be like, thanks. Um, but you know, that's me. But I, but I like this idea of like making it easy. You're inviting a guy to, uh, step up and think about it and maybe he's an expert or maybe he's not, but he still can like find an easy answer by Google. And, and so I love that. I think it's a great strategy. Absolutely. Okay. So let's talk about, well, first real quickly, I want to just make sure we mention uh, dating apps like Bumble and Tinder. And do you, you know, what do you, um, there's a percent match on, on those kinds of things. So what, what do you recommend when you're using apps? What rules apply and what are different from online dating? Well, first off, if we're talking to, if the women who are listening are looking for love, um, I would, if and looking for love efficiently, I would avoid Bumble and Tinder, um, at least initially. I think if you're, the most efficient way is, is using OkCupid. It is, um, it's messaging men that are in uh, above 90%. And Quite frankly, it's just looking at their thumbnail pictures. It's not reading their profiles yet. It's messaging 50 men in about 20 minutes that have high 90% or higher on the algorithm. And then when they do message, so you send 50 in 20 minutes, I suspect about 12 or so are going to come back. And then you've got 12 date options. So you sent 50 messages that asked the guy if you wanted to get a drink. You got 12 coming back for date options. Now you pick your best one or two. And if you do that every week, um, I've found that you only need to meet about six to eight men to find someone you like. Um, so for me, that's the fastest way. And that's why I'm able to get 83% into a relationship. Wow. But, that's amazing. <laughs> thank you. Um, 
But if you do want to use Bumble, Tinder, um, you know, unfortunately, there's no algorithm. So, you know, you could go on a date and it could just be some guy you don't get along with at all. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm not a huge fan. You're not a but... fan of the apps. I mean, I think almost with my opinion. So this is not fact. This is fully my opinion here in the dating den that the apps are like it's almost like um uh, like popcorn, <laughs> right? Like it's hard to have just one, cur- you know, one p- one kernel, one bite of popcorn. So once you start getting in this swipe thing, it becomes like a little bit like eating the whole bag. You're like, yes, no, yes, no. Um, people become very um, less valued. Like hu- the humanness of it becomes less valued to me. And so what I like about what you're talking about is just focusing on one site, like OK Cupid, for example is you're kind of all in. You're really committed there. And especially since you're suggesting 50 messages in 20 minutes. So let's, can we go back to that? Sure. Okay. So we we go on, we look for the matches, and then we send, and you're saying just do that, hey, can we get a drink? Or is there an actual line that you want to try? Yeah. So what my clients say, and, you know, any variation is fine, but, Pretty much everyone uses uh, this. They say, hi, I hope you're doing well. How is your week going? Uh, when you get a free moment, let me know if you'd like to grab a drink sometime, Mike. And we send that 50 times. And we copy and paste it and send it. Wow. Okay. I'm totally having my clients try this. I'm and gonna... just for the record, men cannot do this. This only works when women do it. <laughs> really? Why? Why, Mike? Oh, oh man, men will fall on their face. They will get, if they send a hundred, they'll get one or two responses. Women, um, like I said earlier, get five, 10 messages a day. Men, on the other hand, get one, maybe two a week. So women just have so many options of messages coming in. So if they get some generic copy and paste, they're not even going to read it. Women, when they look at, sometimes they discard men in like one or two seconds um, versus men, when they get a woman, they're going to spend quite a bit of time really researching it. And really, um, you know, taking some time and they're just not going to throw it away because they don't get very many. Very interesting. And so and and so even though it's sort of masculine, you don't think that turns off the like more quality guy or the more alpha guy to get that. Like, I'd love to meet for a drink sometime. (laughs) No, absolutely not. So I'm a guy. And if an attractive girl that makes sense for me messages me. I can promise you, I will be doing cartwheels. I will be doing backflips. I'm like, this is the best day of my life. A hot girl messaged me. This is amazing. Like, fantastic. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, we're totally trying this at Danny with Dignity. I got to tell you. Um, okay, so um, any other tips if a woman is initiating the conversation to make sure it gets the right response? Um, so let's say, so... I gave a very specific method of like saying, do you want to get a drink? Um, there's some women that would not feel comfortable at all, um, you know, just immediately jumping to a date. And so that's perfectly fine. Um, so the second thing would be, so let's say the guy comes back and says, um, sure, I'd love to um, get a drink, but you're not comfortable yet. So you read his profile, you look at his pictures, and you're excited about the guy, though. All you do is say, awesome, let's talk on the phone for 10 minutes and then we can set up the date. So this gives you an opportunity to talk to them, make sure you know everything's fine, you have good um, back and forth, some banter, and then um, you know you can set up the date. And unfortunately, if the conversation goes absolutely terrible, um, then you have the opportunity to say, you know, listen, uh, I'm sorry, um, I don't think I'm interested anymore. I wish you the best of luck. Take care. That sounds great. I would say we're not a match, but that's just because I'm I'm less direct instead of like I'm not interested. But that's yeah. just me. <laughs> that was too. That. Yeah, I'm like, I just feel like we're not a match. So, but I wish you the best of luck. Okay, awesome. Um, okay, so do you have any based on that? Like, so do you have any uh, suggestions on like which guys should you actually go on the date with? I mean, how like what's the filter? I mean, you've got the ninety percent plus match. They wrote you back, so they're interested. Anything else to help you narrow it down? Yeah, so there's three things that you want to look at, and I'll prioritize them um, for our viewers. Um, So the first thing is their profile. Um, So that's the most important thing. I want everyone to 
read the profile and make their own decision. Like, does this person make sense for me? Because everyone knows themselves the best, and I also trust them better than the math formula. So everyone read the profile. Then number two is the algorithm. Is it above 90%? Is it above 80%? So anything above 80 is pretty good. But anything above 90, and especially above 93, you should start getting really excited. And you should be very hesitant to rule things out above 93 because you're probably going to have a good conversation with that person. Okay. Um, but I would say if you read a profile and it's magnificent and the match percentage is very low, uh, absolutely go on the date. Um, once again, number one overrides uh, number two. Now, number three is the message. And a lot of women are ruling guys out because of the message. And I think this is a terrible idea. Um, unfortunately, men uh, men are very frustrated with online dating because they will spend some time writing these messages and then not get a response. Or they'll just you know, send a lot of messages and not get a response. But anyway, um, they get to a point where they're so frustrated that sometimes they don't spend the time to write a good message because they're so accustomed to not getting responses. And if you think about it, the successful, handsome guy um, that has a great job, you know, he doesn't have hours to be looking for a woman, reading a profile, and then crafting a message. He's busy, so maybe he doesn't write the best message. So I'd rather see if a guy has a bad message but then a great profile, you definitely should override him because that means – all right, he spent time on the profile. He obviously cares about this, but on a week-to-week basis, you know, it's really hard to sometimes spend the time to write a great message. That is so cool. You know what I love about this whole conversation for me is that, so one of my sort of things this year is uh, my word of the year is like possibility. And I've been thinking like every day, you know, like bringing in possibility and and really like meditating on what that means. And so um, I think for a lot of us, I'm like you all ladies, like sitting there, you're like, no, this is the way I know how to do it. This is what, you know, this is what I do. I'm very attached to my way of being right. And so what I really love that's coming up for me is that there's just the possibility of doing this like a completely different way, a different intentional way, like focusing on this one site, sending this messages. Because the worst thing that can happen is that you get the same result you're getting now. <laughs> and right, like that's the worst case. But what I always ask myself and really encourage all of you to think about is like, what's the best case scenario? Like, imagine like this, like you have been waiting for a new way to do online dating. And this is just like completely different approach. You never thought of it. Try it. Like be open to the possibility that this sort of is the formula. This is the system that is going to be the most efficient way for you to meet a guy. And even if it puts you outside of your comfort zone, um, I freaking love this conversation and I'm so happy that we are sharing it with the world, the dating den. Me too. Um, I mean, this is so exciting because it actually took me 10 years to come up with this process and I was always fine tuning it and fine tuning it. And finally it got recognized, um, in the dating world as something that actually works. So about three years ago, that's when, um, some of the online dating sites approached me and said, Hey, this thing really works. Why don't we give you um, some math behind it? So that's when I got the data and that's when I got to fine tune it even more. And now it's just like this thing works. And so, and it's fabulous. And we've got all the data to back it up. So cool. Okay. My last question, I just want to clarify when you send out those 50 messages, do you need to send those 50 to only people that are over 90% or are you, what's the, what's the cutoff for those 50 messages? Yeah, I should walk through this process. Um, okay. Better. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So your search for um, high match percentage And so it starts with like 97% and then goes down, obviously. So yes, you're going to look for, um, you're going to start at the top. And the way you do it is I don't want you looking at profiles. I don't want you doing any research on the guy. I just want you to send the message as long as the thumbnail picture, not even the profile, just the first thumbnail picture looks above a four of attractiveness. Okay. To you. Yeah. To the person. And why um, Why above a four? There was a scientific study done a number of years ago where they had women look at a man's picture and rate him on a zero to 10 on attractiveness. So a woman would rate a guy a four. Then they'd let them talk to the, uh, to the guy. If he had a magnificent personality, then you re-rated the attractiveness and a four went to an eight. And then on the flip side, if a woman was talking to the guy and he had a terrible personality, the four went to a zero. So they did this study over and over again, and they found that women, on average, could move men four basis points. So anytime you rated a guy, if you got to know his personality, he could move up four points. 
Wow. So, I've totally seen this with my clients, by the way. Right? They go out yeah. with the guy and then they get to know him and they have chemistry and he's funny and he's sweet and he makes them feel really loved and really appreciated. And they do some, like, adventure date and they, like, see him, you know, like you know climb rocks or you know where they see him play with somebody at the a kid at the park and you know help him look for a lost toy and they're like oh and then i'll and then he becomes attractive physically so cool absolutely that is amazing wow okay so did i interrupt you in the process so 50 messages carry on oh yeah i forgot where we were all right so just looking at the thumbnail picture you send 50 pictures you're going down based on match percentage so then you send 50. Um, for most of us, about 12 come back. And then once you get the 12, that's who, when you then look at the picture, you look at the profile. And especially if they're above 93%, be very careful to rule people out based on picture. Um, be very hesitant. Um, you'd be shocked. I have a number of clients. I, I always remember the story. I had a client, the first date she went on, um, she messaged the guy. She goes on the first date. She's like, oh, this guy's, I'm not attracted to him at all. I'm like, how was the conversation? She was like, it was awesome. I'm like, all right, you want to give him a second date? She's like, I guess. She goes on the second date. I'm like, are you attracted to him yet? She goes, no, not at all. I'm like, was it the date fun? She's like, yeah, I had a, I had a really good time. He's uh, great to talk to. Anyway, fast forward. She finally gets to date eight and she calls me. She goes, Mike. That guy is the sexiest man alive. Woo! Like, what? <laughs> and so fast forward, um, I think it was like six months ago they got engaged. Um, so there you go. There you go. And I tell this to clients all the time. It's like one date at a time. Unless there's like an obvious reason to say no, keep going on the date and try and create that chem chemistry and connection through, you know, conversation, vulnerability, you know, not just sitting there looking at each other, eating, you know, filet, um, do stuff. That is such a great story. Okay. So, do, so if I think for the third time, I've probably taken you off the track of the story of the 50 messages. This is like, let's call this podcast 50 messages. And, <laughs> and then, okay. And then. All right, cool. So then 50 messages, 12 come back. Um, then you pick the, you know, number one and number two, you prioritize them based on what you think, um, which guy you'll like the best. Um, and then next week, um, if three and four are good, then you could go on, um, those dates or you can, um, you know, send another batch of messages and get a new crop of men and also select, um, you know, the messages that are coming in and also just to manage expectations for women out there. And really, most sites, I'm expecting that 95% of the messages coming in are not going to be intriguing. So we've found that if you get 20 messages, 19 of them are going to be garbage. So only one of them is going to suit your needs. So I know everyone gets discouraged, and trust me, I've done online dating myself. It can be very frustrating. But if you manage that expectation that you need 20 to get one good person, um, then it becomes a little more uh, bearable. Mm, that's so true, because it really is. It's like... Uh... Going, I think our colleague Evan Mark Cat says it's like going up to you know to to hit the baseball and expecting you're going to get a home run every time and that doesn't happen, right? So it's looking at the total number of at bats <laughs> and yeah. you know hoping that you just hit the ball one time, right? That's what you're kind of looking for to begin with. Yeah, I mean you only need one person, so even if you get it wrong, you know, 300 times in a row, when you finally get it right, well, that person's yours for the rest of your life. The rest of your life. Okay, I can't <laughs> sing. Um, Michael, Mike, Michael, Mike, I am so happy that you came into the Dating Den. Do you have any other last tips, tricks, techniques, words of advice as we set on this path of dating Michael Style online? Oh, um, should I tell... Everyone, the, the free stuff I'm giving away? Well, for sure. But wait, before you do that, and that's going to all be in the show notes, by the way. So if you're driving or at the gym, you don't have to, like, you know, risk life and limb. <laughs> You'll be able to click on the show notes. But before we do that, wait, when I said, do you have any other tip strategies, you went, Ugh. What what does that mean? Is there, like, you're like, oh, my God, I have so many. I don't know which to say first. What does it mean? Yeah, it, I mean, I could, we could talk for, like, five more hours. <laughs> 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 which is why that's a great segue, which is why you want to click on the show notes because Michael Mike 
Goldstein, who has got a system that works, uh, has some uh, freebies to help you get started. So, yes, what what is uh, what is available when they click on the show notes and find out more about you? Absolutely. So this is part of the thing that I spent 10 years to create, and I'm actually giving it away for free because I just want everyone to fall in love, and this thing's amazing. But it's how to be in the top 5%, or excuse me, the thing I'm giving away for free um, first is how to find high-quality men a high quality man in three easy steps. And the main reason you've been choosing the wrong men. Um, I spent a ton of time on this, um, giving it away for free and it's really awesome. And then on top of that, what's really cool. And I love this that I get to offer this and this is really time consuming, but I got to do it. Um, if you click that, you enter your email address, then it gives you an option to have a 15 minute complimentary dating strategy phone session with me. And I love these because I just ramble on generic, terrible advice right now. But if we get to talk on the phone, you get to ask me whatever is important to you. And I love that moment because it's like, one, there's not other people around. It gets really personal. And I'm an open book. You can ask me anything under the sun. And we just nail it. And we really get down to the nitty gritty of what you want to fix in your dating life. And I love that. So absolutely fabulous. If you get a chance, click it. Um, I, and what's even cooler about it, I have an automated calendar. Um, so it's not like a pain in the butt to schedule. You do two clicks, you're scheduled, you're in there. I call you and boom, we're talking. That is um, so cool. I love that. Okay. Why would you not do it? Number one. And number two, look what he just did for my one client's profile. Like that was just like in two seconds and he didn't have it in front of him. So, um, yes. So click once, click twice. Mike is nice. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get your freebie and schedule your session and um yeah we we totally want to we want to try all of this um i think it sounds really great it sounds fun it's empowering um because you get to feel like you are in the position of creating connection and um your expectations can be managed and i just think for a lot of ladies who are listening just a fresh way to do something can get us really excited it's like a do over it's like hitting refresh on the on the the little you know internet bar and like stuff pops up and um it's the year is new ish and my year is all about possibility so make it yours damn it why not um mike thank you for being here i'm gonna say it one more time uh one what did i say one clicks to cl click once click twice mike is nice <laughs> And I have a new tagline. This is I awesome. know. <laughs> and click once, click twice. Mike is nice. Go into the show notes um, and let us know. Like if you meet with Mike and it works and you become one of his success stories, tell us that you found out about him through the freaking po podcast here. We would love that. All oh, right. One yes. other thing. Sorry, Marnie. No, I mean, look, we could talk for hours. What else you got? <laughs> Oh, um, just to make life easier in case people are driving and weren't able to take any notes, um, I put an outline of my top 5% of uh, successful online daters, so like a checklist, and it marks down all the things you need for the perfect profile, all the things um, for the profile picture and for the profile, so it'll walk you through creating that. Um, so I just wanted to make things as easy as possible. That thing's entirely free, so just click it, you get it, um, you know, Make it happen in 2017, like Marnie said. Yeah, I love this. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. This was just, like, amazing. Literally going to tell everyone I know to try this, and I can't wait to see what happens. Um, you are such a stud to be here, and I just appreciate getting to know you and having you in the dating den, and I can't wait to have you back. So we have another four hours of, of online dating talk uh, um, in us, I believe. And, and ladies, take note of Marnie. The reason <laughs> she is so successful with her husband is because listen to all these compliments. Like, I just never want to stop talking to her because she just makes me feel so good about myself. That's so great. But I also haven't asked you to, to change the cat litter or empty the trash. <laughs> 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 but but so that's good. Well, I appreciate you. And uh, I look forward to more. And ladies... Click once, click twice, might be nice. And date with dignity, <laughs> damn it. All right, we'll see you on the next show. Bye-bye, everybody.